Aloha, my name is Mark Ito, and I'm your host today for Community Matters. In 1968, there was a plan to make radio frequency for a non-commercial educational radio FM frequency right here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. 50 years later, it became known as KTUH, an island-wide broadcasting station for alternative radio. And like we say here at KTUH, it's radio for the people and the only station that loves you. Today, I'm here with the current general manager and program director here, me Wong and Bjorn Barnett. Me, Bjorn, thank you for coming to the show. Mark, thank you so much thank for you, having me. Thank you. thank you. So KTUH, um, can you guys give like a general description um, of what KTUH is and kind of like a little brief history of what it is about? Absolutely, yeah. Um, well, KTUH is our college radio station at UH Manoa. Uh, Smi, you want to you wanna talk a little bit about what we are? Yeah, we are a student-run radio station, and uh, we, have, we, we provide mostly alternative program, uh, music program. Uh, we play alternative rock, uh, electronic, CD, uh, electronic music, uh, Hawaiian music, um, just like non-mainstream music. Right. And recently, we, we launched our podcast, talk show, so we try to provide uh, some, something other than just provide music. Right, and awesome. It's kind of like how it first started, it was kind of be more of like an educational, mm -hmm. kind of like discussional mm -hmm. kind of topic. Mm -hmm. So going on that tip, you guys are talking about like the different types of music and whatnot, mm -hmm. and that's what kind of draws you to KTUH. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted to talk about like how you, you guys started off with, like why you guys were interested in KTUH and eventually joined and became the GM and the program director there. Um, I'm a music music composition student at UH, so music is like a biggest passion for me. Right. And I listen to KDUH, and I, I the first time I listened to the KDUH is a uh, Leon's show Friday oh, at yeah, yeah. 19, 19 noon. Right. I thought this is like something I would never hear elsewhere. It was amazing. So that was something that I feel like it, there's a group of people really play something very cool. The music very cool, and the vibe is just really unique. So that's the first time I think, oh, I should be part of this, this group too. Right. So that's how I, I started to contact KUH, and uh, finally I am I'm really proud that I'm part of this group. My story is a little different. Um, I'm a molecular biologist <laughs> at, at the University of Hawaii. Right. Um, what drew me to KTUH was being involved in college radio previously. Right. Um, I was an AV specialist at my undergraduate college, Gettysburg College. And um, I had originally contacted KTUH to do um, technical jobs. Um, and that's kind of what, what uh, generated my original interest in, in radio. So, but um, what, the way I started at KTUH, though, was having a radio show. Um, but the technical aspects is what sparked my initial interest, actually. Right. So going to the um, second image we have here, um, mm. we have on the program on it in just a moment. Um, we have some of the staff members there, just like starting in Hawaii Hall. And if we can kind of go to the next picture, kind of talks about the more technical aspects. So right here is the example of uh, the frequency. So yeah, that looks like our current contour map for 90.1. And if we go to the next picture, it kind of tells about like, how it was previously to what it is as we know it is now. So. Got it, yeah. So I think we had like three different radio stations before well, over the island? What or, we had was one radio station. Right. Um, and we had two translator facilities. Okay. Yeah. Um, and at one point, I believe they had more than that. Really? But yeah, but we had a translator facility for the windward side. Right. And there was a translator facility for the North Shore that we still have right, right. now, which is broadcasting on 91.1. Right. Um, so, and those aren't separate radio stations, but they Art. do like relay the primary oh, okay. radio station and they take it and rebroadcast it on a different frequency right. so that you can boost it. Okay. Yeah. So kind of going back on like how they used to be more like little radio stations, but KTUH mm -hmm. kind of start, kind of had to fight their way to get to this like island wide broadcasting, right? Yeah. Like, I believe, I believe like they started off just like a little AM frequency that you can only hear like at the university campus. Actually, yeah, they were broadcasting just in the dorms on right. the AM carrier current. Yeah, um, before they started. It's kind of yeah. like it's kind of amazing to see that like such a like small like thing as KTUH evolved to like a F, being on the FM frequency and that can be heard 
island wide mm -hmm. and also online as well so which is yeah. a super cool thing i think for people that cannot catch it in oahu but are like on the neighboring islands or abroad yeah radio stations are very involved um, organizations and you can kind of tell that you know it's a very demanding organization to run as me and i have both learned you know, in our current roles and I think the combination of the enthusiasm from the DJs and the community and the ability to, to, to overcome these technical challenges has led to the growth of the radio station. Because what you're really talking about is growth, right? Right. You're really talking about the growth from being just in the dorms to just in Manoa to now on the top of panelists broadcasting island-wide. This is, this is growth on the FM frequency. Right. Yeah, and that interest from the community and the interest from the students is what really has ultimately led to the sustained mm -hmm. ability to keep KTH open and the growth of it. All right, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I so think it's, I think it's awesome. Too. Yeah, I think like it's some it's like something that's not really in existence anymore, which is college radio that is run by students yeah. for not only the community, only greater good of the university campus, but also expands outside of the community the UH community, which is, I think it's like an amazing thing because, like I said, there's not like a lot of like college radio stations like that anymore in the nation where we do this type of programming, right, that we do mm -hmm. at KTUH. So for those of that don't really know what KTUH programming is, how does it work? Like, is there like a show every like one hour or like, like an hour show or like is it like three, four hours? How do the shifts kind of work? Yeah, we recently have uh, every three hours we have a new show and we run 24-7. Uh, this is our current programming, um, but um, we have a lot of new DJs and community members. They would like to have their own show too. So this coming fall, we're thinking of maybe we can expand it uh, to have the sh more shows to uh, more DJs. So currently we have three hours, every three hours we have new shows, but uh, this fall, we are thinking of maybe uh, we can be more flexible to uh, allow our DJs to, to host a shorter show or longer show, okay. one hour, two hours show. Yeah. So would that be kind of like, like would that kind of, for example, be like one hour talk show mm -hmm. followed by one, maybe like a two hour right. like music yeah, show, exactly. for example, right? Yes. Okay, that's super awesome. That's something. Has any other college radio station in the nation kind of a similar programming like that? Or is like... I know you guys visited um, other colleges recently, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like outside of mm -hmm. Hawaii. So, can you guys kind of elaborate how that experience was like? I would say yes. Most of them actually are more. Um, most most college radio stations are pretty flexible um, with the programming. They um, they're pretty flexible with the structure of their programming. Right. That's how I would phrase that. Um, I think our goal, um, it's me and my goal for the programming. Is to is to is to is to give the DJs as many options as possible to create the show they want. Right. So um, what we are trying to do is is give people the option to have shorter shows or longer shows. Give them the option to have online only shows. Um, we just want um, we want you know we want the the show to fit the person, not the person to fit the show. Okay. You know, so that they can bring their ideas um, to KTUH. So you're just talking about like having people having their shows online. Would that be through the website, through a, a website, or like a SoundCloud, a MixCloud? Or how would that kind of go about? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, before we were talking about the growth of our FM frequency, right? Right. Um, well, one of the next areas that I think we want, we're hoping KTUH can grow is online. Um, and so we actually want to, to promote um, DJs to be able to publish shows in all of those areas that you just listed. Right. Mixcloud, SoundCloud, um, podcasting. Right. Our podcast is on many different platforms. It's on TuneIn, Spotify, Google Play. It's on iTunes, of course. Um, yeah, a lot of different um, uh, Stitcher, right? Yeah. Right. So there's, yeah, so um, it, we try to publish one feed on many different platforms. Yeah. Okay. That sounds awesome. So, kind of, so like we were saying, um, so 1969, K2H first broadcasted, and right now the year is 2019, and mm -hmm. it's 50 years in the making right here. So, um, if we can go to the image that we have next, I believe it's our um, 
library vault of like 50 years worth of music and like from throughout the ages and whatnot. So, I mean, I know you talked about like music was the kind of like the reason why you gravitated towards KTUH and like are like amazed by like the variety, especially like with um, Leon or Mr. Modular mm -hmm. as he's known on the radio station. Mm -hmm. So, like before knowing that they had a vinyl vault like this, what what are kind of your thoughts about the music? I was totally so, amazed. Um, cause um, right now, st uh, students mm, right now, all, all the people mostly just listen to to music from from their phone. Uh, nobody really people buy CDs, vinyls anymore. But uh, we still use the traditional way to to broadcast music. Right. Most of our DJs uh, uh, bring in their own collection of CDs or vinyls. They they use our uh, CD collection or vinyl collections. That's very unique. Uh, and that's spe that's something special about radio radio industry. Uh, yeah. We we use the, the physical CD or vinyl. You can hear the like a scratch sound sometimes, right. and you can hear the transition. Sometimes it's not perfect, like uh, compared to Spotify. But that's something human about it. Right. It's something uh, something passion. You can hear the, the DJ's passion when they really look. Or just one track of, of, of a song from uh, like a, a 10 track CDs and they had to look for one track from like thousand CD from our our CD library right so it's, I kind of like the way you elaborated on the fact that like it's the human aspect of mm -hmm. it like the um that like connection of like of the music not being so perfect and it's just mm -hmm. kind of less like you kind of like you say you can kind of get a scratching mm -hmm. from the vinyl or the CDs and mm -hmm. kind of like it's kind of like that human element. It's not like mm -hmm. automation kind mm -hmm. of stuff where um, people, like we're in commercial, like a lot of commercial radio just like kind of all automated mm -hmm. and it's very done, very structured mm -hmm. and like with all the kind of stuff. So um, the next picture kind of I want to bring up is the um, library exhibit that we just had this past couple of months, couple of months and just kind of like help celebrate. So these are some of the images that um, showcased what we had from like old, like, Vintage like K two H memorabilia from like DJ like music logs to like um staff to old pictures of the staff members working mm -hmm. at the station with the equipment and let's go through the next picture as well it has like our equipment that they used to use like years ago <laughs> that's not and like you can kind of give the idea of like what it is to be like a radio disc jockey. Yeah, so, so if we stick on this image, you see yes. some really interesting stuff here. Uh, um, on the left, right, is a car tape player. Yep. Um, that is a stack of three, right? It can right. hold three tapes. And those are these large analog tapes that they used to record short productions on. Right. And so the DJ in the booth who was running a show would line up three tapes to play like during their breaks right right um when you know oh yeah yeah, yeah. so and then would it kind of like go in succession like they play one tape and then once that tape ends they play the next tape and they just kind of keep shuffling to put in new like new programming tape right Is yeah that how it went? yeah that's an analog version of something that we do today right yeah so there's also um if we had, went back to that picture it also had like some like an old soundboard and mm -hmm. like some of the old microphone yeah. and we also had a list and like on the right of the soundboard was an amplifier is that correct yeah so um that's an old airboard from our station that has a large power supply <laughs> next to it yeah right and then in the background as well you can also see the um current part of the current program when we have right now at yeah. ktuh and some pictures of our djs and of and whatnot. Um, so right now we got to take a one minute break really quick just to catch our breath and mm -hmm. recollect ourselves. So we'll be back right after this. Hey, hello everyone and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and I uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Konnichiwa. Think Tech Hawaii ga Nihongo de Okuri Shite Imasu. Konnichiwa Hawaii. Host no Kunisei Yukari desu. 
、えー、毎週各週月曜日、えー、2時からですね日本語で日本語で活躍されていらっしゃるハワイのいろいろな方をお招きしてショーをゲストショーをお届けしています、えー、ぜひ、えー、ご覧になってくださいとかなり、コメモレー、50 years、because 50 years is like、especially for a radio station is very like、unheard of in this kind of day and age。So、are we celebrating it to the greater masses。Yeah、50 years is definitely our big milestone、um,。So we celebrate、we already have the, the alumni take over、and this summer、and we have the alumni reception。Uh, no, uh, we have the X of it, <laughs> but we will have an alumni reception、uh, is、uh, October 4. Before October 4,、um, there's a, a series of concerts that you actually managed.、Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so、yes. yeah, we are really excited for those.、Uh, we bring in a lot of local musicians、um, to play.、Um, they'll bring, bring back some old memories, and what we started,、um, the, the KDUH, is the, our passion for, for music. Yeah,、right. so in, in,、uh, in September, all four weeks,、uh, we'll have four concert series every Friday. And、uh, we have a grand finale, a big celebration on October 4.、Um, uh, Richard Thompson is a legendary、mm -hmm. um, yeah. so、musician we'll be,、awesome. we'll be playing. Oh, yes, definitely.、Um, so if we can throw up the number 10 picture, I believe.、Uh, we have our ATOH、um, number if you want to con get any contact. or Um, in regards to、um, the radio station, as far as like, if you have any questions about like, how you can join the KTUH, from, even if you're not a part of the student body, or like, just talk about how the radio station works and, what, and whatnot.、Um, if we can see the next couple of pictures, please. Yes,、yeah, so we have some. So during the exhibit as well, we had some of our staff members that unfortunately passed away.、Um, one of the big ones was Rap. Ruplinger was a very famous K2H alumni. And he's a very famous like, music comedian、mm -hmm. throughout the islands as well.、Um, more recently in 2014, with Abel, who was, like, was a really loved DJ at K2H as well. So just want to give a little moment to them, give a little、um, shine for those that have contributed to this awesome K2H radio, college radio station.、Um, if we can go to the next slide, I believe. We have Some other things that we do at KTOH are our takeovers.、Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty cool, I, I think, just like as a way to reach out to the community outside of these like, big events. So,、um, one of these is the picture you're seeing right now. It's a,、um, a little bit older picture with some of、uh, the older DJs that wanted to play music for the community. And it's a way for the community to get to know the DJs on a face to face personality rather than hearing them through a radio or like,、uh, some sort of. Do FM frequency, perhaps.、Mm -hmm. um, what are you guys' thoughts about、um, like K2H doing like some、uh, kind of like these like community events to kind of like show that we aren't just like just in UH but outside of the UH community as well? Right. So last fall, we actually had a major fundraiser.、Right. Um, we did two fundraisers last year. We do our annual radiothon、um, every year to pay for our operations. But last year, we did a second one. In the fall, and that was primarily to fund these community events for the 50th anniversary.、Um, and I believe, in, in my mind, the purpose of these events is to celebrate the 50th anniversary of like the local college radio station, but it's also to give opportunities to local musicians and artists、um, who, who want to perform. Um, and want to be sort of you know, recognized by the community as performers and for you know, contributing to the local music, the local music、um, scene, of which KTOH has been, a, I think, a major part for many years. Right, and we have a programming with Monday Night Live, which is 
what every Monday where they have a live a live act in studio and they do like an interview segment plus they play like an hour of original music. Yes, original music, not cover music. So which I think is really cool in the fact that like they're promoting their arts and craft and where it's like the platform to kind of give them their shine mm-hmm. to like get that like recognition and that reach that K2H has with the different community members. Um, I believe the next slide is our concert right here. Yes, this is the one we were looking for. So we were talk- just talking about this earlier with the Richard Thompson Electric Trio. Yes, and Richard Thompson, for um, the audience members that don't know who he is, he's a very famous um, electric, very famous guitarist, and by some of our own staff members says it's one of the best in the world. So just to have him here to help celebrate 50 years of KTUH. It's an achievement and it's a great honor to have them here and help us celebrate with it. So we we're talking about it's October 4th, uh, Friday. That's going to be a Friday at 8 p.m. at Hawaiian Brines. Um, the address is less there at 1680 Kapilani Boulevard on the second floor. And there's a URL link there as well with k2h50.brownpapertickets.com. If that's a little bit too long for some people, all you can just do is just go to the web to our website, right? That's yes. um, k2h.org, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. so the ticket information and the prices are on the website. Okay. And the link to purchase. Yes. Yeah. So saves you guys time, just go to our website, just click the just go follow the um, directions from there and I'll show you everything as far as what we're planning for this big uh, concert series. Um, so Kind of touched on it briefly about like what we wanted to do to expand for future reference for um, KTUH and outside of KTUH, what do you, I kind of wanted to get your guys' thoughts about this with radio and just in general, because like you were, you were saying earlier, a lot of people are just downloading or listening music from like their phones, mm-hmm. from like their laptops or tablets or whatever. And it's like a lot, it's a lot of music curated just for them in that regard. So I kind of wanted to hear you guys' opinion about like, the future of like radio broadcasting as a whole, whether if it's gonna be like, what is it gonna be like? Mm-hmm. Is it gonna be kind of like similar to what we have right now, or like in fifty years down the line, is it gonna be something completely different that, you know, it's beyond our imagination right now? Right. Um, well, I can start by saying I think radio is here to stay. It's not growing as fast as it was, but it's also I don't think it's going anywhere. Right. I think that in at this in this day and age, in order to be in order to be a cutting edge radio station and reach reach the people who really want to listen to you, um, I think it's important to be online. Mm-hmm. Um, but one special thing about one special thing about radio is that those streaming platforms that you listed can't be played on the air, like Spotify. Mm-hmm. Their terms of service specifically states that it can't be played on radio. So when you listen to FM radio, you're always going to hear music that is specifically curated by that DJ. So, right. and I don't think I don't think that's going to change even with streaming. Right. I think that you know people who DJ on the radio and put the effort in will always want to, to play you know um, special music for their radio. Right. Yeah. But I think to grow, I think on, online content is really important. I think because people use those platforms so much now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we really need to reach outside FM, and that's what Smee and I are working on. Right. Yeah. Um, your thoughts about yeah. Um, yeah, for, for, for KTUH to, to be able to grow, we, we really want to bring in some, some other thoughts, like talk show and other educational content, because um, we are a student-run student college radio station. We want, we want our, our students at UH, their voice to be heard, their research projects, and some uh, ca- campus issues, because you know we, we have talk show, um, right. they address LGBT issues, they address uh, women's issues, they address um, like uh, future sustainability. Those issues, uh, th- th- those are important, but they are not necessarily in like right in the, the alley that um, the mainstream uh, media address every day, but we really want to bring those subculture to our, to, to, to our station and uh, let people learn more about their research. Right. So the, so the general gist I'm getting is that we have Berkeley Radio to exist. It's just, you just have to be really con- 
heard with like what's going on and like just listen to the people pretty much mm -hmm. is pretty much what we're we're doing as like our responsibility as radio whether that's like playing music that people currently are into or even to like current issues like social issues to like political issues hopefully not that hopefully not too controversial <laughs> but just have to be current is the main trend that we have to be focused on and i know k2h is a little bit i've we've been told that's a little bit like on the older demographic side so like mm -hmm. kind of like the um like the old, how do you say like the aunties and the uncles side of things so a lot of things you guys are doing right now is for like the next generation like our generation or whatnot with the online part but to kind of like satisfy the older the older crowd per se how would you say you can include them into this kind of this branding of the future uh yeah that's a great question um so fm's not our fm signal's not going anywhere right so those who do listen on fm are um are still being served by KTOH, but what I would say there is that we're um, we're trying to we're trying to serve as many people as possible. Right. We want to bring as many people as possible into our our listener base. So um, it's really important. The online content is important to serve people who uh, don't live within our FM coverage, other islands and mainland. Mm -hmm. um, as far as older listeners go, I do believe they also um, that streaming is also popular in older demographics, maybe more popular in the younger demographics. Really? Yeah, but I think old and young use that streaming, um, streaming and podcasting, especially um, especially the people who don't live within the, the terrestrial reach of our FM. Right. Yeah. So, okay, so that's it's really interesting to yeah. hear that kind of stuff. So um, just to kind of wrap wrap up and just to get people to be more aware about KTOH just to, I know we've mentioned it before so is there any other ways to reach out to you guys specifically as far as like KTOH but if they have any problems questions concerns or, just, or anything just on that matter how can they contact you guys? Yeah, they can call us uh KOH 956-5288 um is our office number and they can also email us gm at kdoh.org um, yeah, we're always looking for new new DJs, and we we are open for any suggestions. So yeah, please contact us. We accept DJs from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be a student to be a DJ. Anybody can apply who wants to. All they need to do is want want to be a DJ on K two H. Right. So we encourage anyone who wants to be involved to be involved somehow, okay. whether it be by donating or DJing or even coming to tour the station. Okay, sounds awesome. So, unfortunately, we ran out of time to for our discussion. Hopefully, we can have you guys back on soon just to talk about how the concert, how the concert series, and the con big Richard Thompson concert go. So, once again, this is Community Matters. My name is Mark Ito. Thank you for tuning in, and for anything that's awesome, tune into ThinkTechHawaii.com. Aloha. Yeah.